Yeah, and the second bit as well. Oh, the second bit, that's exactly. You know, in fact, here in Japan last year, Suede got our front covers of music magazines. Yeah. And this year, Blur seemed to take over that position. I mean, yeah, who that's cares? Cause, that's because we haven't been here. I mean, care. What, what do you think when you get a front cover in the enemy or melody maker? Nothing. Nothing. Exactly. How many have you had? Does it matter anymore? No. Not at all. No. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I think personally. Yeah. Who cares? You know, yeah, okay, it's nice. It's, you look at the picture and you think, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the about video it. shoot was interesting. And, uh, I just think it's a nice photo. Lighting, you think it's a nice photo, and that's it. You know. <laughs> nice. yeah. um, and then we went through the second one about the clever songs. Okay. And I was going to say, uh, you do seem to care a lot about your fans. Yeah. Well, you do this. You do this, all these secret gigs with just for the fan club, right? Mm -hmm. um, you were doing a tour, was it la last year? Yeah. Of Europe? Of Europe, yeah, it was early last year, yeah. Just for the fan clubs? Oh no, um, oh, that's what we mean. Um, we went to France yeah. to do uh, a fan club show. Yeah, and then you were supposed to make it into a tour and you didn't in the end or something like that? Don't know that. No, we just, we just came over to France to play to the fan, French fan club with Richard, you know, to, just to do his first gig. Yeah. Really, and then we went back to London and did one for the fan club there. Um, yeah, but it wasn't going to be a tour, just for the fan club, no. So you do care a lot about Oh yeah, incredibly. That's yeah. why we're here. We're going to go differently. That's why we're here. No, fans are great. Yeah, just, you know, that's, that's why I was, I was wondering why, you know, this, this sort of sudden, you know, interest in writing something with a meaning. I was thinking that, you know, those kind of fans would want something to, to cogitate about. Yeah, you've got to keep changing it. Yeah, you've got to change it, otherwise. There's no point in doing an album the same as the first one, right? Yeah, it? I mean, thinking of change, um, you said um, that the way you were writing before sometimes was very unproductive. The way you. Um, Bernard was in the band. We were writing in a kind of unproductive way. Mm. And from now on you will be writing in a different way. Yeah. Because of well, yeah, I mean, So yeah. do you do you think like the the album could have been different? Are you, you are you looking back at it because like it's like old stuff to, from that point of view. Do you think that it could have been done in a different way? Do you think it could have been better? Uh, you know, would you change things if you had the opportunity to? Well, of this album now? Yeah. No, I don't think so. No, it's just, just from, from now on we want to just write in a different way. You know, rather than... We did pretty much what we wanted to write. Yeah. So, we were left to win. We just did. We just did everything we wanted, because Butler was only in the band for the first month of the month of the year. We might have to go about three months from then. Mm -hmm. So the second two months that I was doing it, that's... that's the change the band was the band working in harmony. So, well, it was good. Yeah, so that's why the album's so good, really. Yeah. It wouldn't have been as good as it, as it, as it, as it is if he'd been still been in the band. I don't believe that. It's a matter of, it's a matter of opinion. I do believe that. Yeah. So the change happened halfway. Well, no, right before halfway. Yeah. Really. So you corrected that kind of that way yeah, of writing. I mean, yeah. yeah, we sort of did it anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 yeah, there was so many tensions and there's so much going on, like shit going on. But for it to come out as a, as a coherent album, yeah. so, I mean, when you're getting distracted, when you get distracted, distracted and there's personal things going on, and, and music is taking a second, second you see it, and it's really calm. Uh -huh. um, when, you, uh, um, when you started um, in your success, you were a very elitist kind of band, especially in certain places like New York and stuff. Like, you know, certain, <coughs> certain elites of people were following the band. Right. Have you noticed this changing? Um, what do you mean? Different, more different? You know, expanding in yeah. other areas, other people were accepting you rather than being, say, in New York, the gay community or something like that. Yeah, oh, well, it's not just that anyway. But, um, yeah, I think a lot more, a lot, yeah, sort of different people, different
different sections of society they tend to sort of you know mothers and people like that you know, sort of parents of, of the you know, the people who got the first album the fan you know sort of fans and now they're sort of parents are coming as well sometimes and you know and their cousins and things like that so yeah it is yeah we, yeah, we, we have noticed it we were playing bigger places you now on this tour. Apart from last night. Apart from, Apart from last night. Oh, I was alright, I was quite. I was good. That was good last night. I mean, I wasn't there, but that was because it was a tiny Oh, it was really place. tiny, yeah, yeah, but that was because it was in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but, um, I mean, last time we played Italy, it was, we were playing to like 300, 400 people. We were playing to 2000. Tonight it's 2000, so. Yeah. So I would logically say, yes, we are expanding. Yeah. Um, Heroin was uh, written about Marilyn Monroe. No. No? No, Marilyn's just, um, just a word, really. Marilyn, um, Marilyn comes up, but I don't know. It's just a word, it's not Marilyn Monroe. All right. So when Daddy's sleeping, is not about James Dean? Yeah, that is. Yeah. That is. Yeah, Marilyn, Marilyn, the word Marilyn, Marilyn. People would say that some sort of literally, it's really pathetic, the interpretations of it. It really worries me that people can't see. There was a, there was a review of, of the record saying that heroin was about someone sitting in a, in a, in a dusty lot wake, waiting for a spectre of Marilyn Monroe to come visit them I mean, how literal can you get? My Marilyn comes to my son for an hour. My Marilyn is just like my beauty, my, yeah. my love, my own. You should just read it so literally. Yeah. Marilyn, just because Marilyn Monroe's the only famous Marilyn, apart from Marilyn the singer. <laughs> so this, this, this misunderstanding is a bit pissy off. But that's how I'm doing. But I'm pissing me off at the moment. Uh, you mean this very moment because... No, it just... No, it doesn't have something to do with it. And people misinterpreting that, which is about to do with it, it doesn't mean it It's about pornography. It's about... <laughs> was, are you attracted by 60s legends? Which, I don't know whether it applies anymore, considering that one song is not about Marilyn Monroe anymore. Mm. Um, no, really. I think they're quite boring, really, for the... Some people are attracted by them, I'm attracted by other legends more than them. Like? Slade. I like Slade. We only like glam rock in this band. So you do like Sound of the 70s? No, we only like Sounds of the 70s. We don't like any other band. Yeah. When you say Sounds of the 70s, it's sort of like 73 to 75. No, I mean the, the TV program. Oh, Sounds of the 70s. Yeah. Only, yeah, when Gary Some of it is interesting. <laughs> right? Straight up. No, yeah, no, I I think think the, some of those things are so amusing. Like the, uh, the, the, the sweet, the sweet bit. When, when you can see a uh, bass player, I can't remember his name, mm -hmm. like singing constantly, totally out of sync. Mm -hmm. Sort of like looking into the internet, kissing oh, the camera. And when he's got that thing on his arm, he goes, What do you want to do? And he goes, Well, there was some, it's a line. He just looks at the camera and he goes, Blockbuster. Yeah, it's Blockbuster, but it's that line. We don't give a clue. What do you do? What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, we, like, don't, we only like music made between 1972 and 1974. We don't listen to anything else. No. I've never heard a Beatles record in my life. Or, well, I think I heard that one Jumping Jump Well, that's the only record we like. And as you can tell, we, we're aspiring towards being glam rockers. Um, do you think that drugs make people more, more alive? No, they're not dead. Don't they think for us? No. And the media's got such a lot of power to actually distort what you say. We're in both the same business, we're in, the back, we're in the business of selling things. Your editor is in the business of, of, of selling this magazine, and we're in the business of selling us. We're in the business of selling our product, of selling our, um, of selling our washing powder. 
exactly what we are. We're, we're advertising agents. That's what we are. We're selling our product. Yeah, I suppose it's the um, problem that comes with success. Yeah. Or lack of it sometimes. Or lack of it. Because you have another show. Yeah, but it's the, you know, unfortunately, magazines of whatever uh, level, whatever kind, whether it's uh, Smash Hits or uh, NME or Vox or whatever, mm. are not there in, like they used to be. Uh, not necessarily them ones, but take 20 years ago, magazines were there to, to promote music, mm -hmm. not just to sell. Now magazines are there to sell copies. They don't, care, they don't care about the music. All they have to do is sell more copies. That's what it's so mm -hmm. they're not there to promote you because you're a good band and you're coming up and you need promotion. They're there because they know they stick that sort of They make you sell. big, they put you in the front cover and say this is the next big thing. Yeah. And it's, it's happened to you at the beginning. You know, you were like even more popular. Yeah, it depends on the journalists, really. I mean, but, you maybe. know, but, but that's, that, that's, that, that's the whole thing. You know, they want the bands that make them sell, cop sell copies because they had the chance, the, the photos and the interviews and, and enough juice to, to, to put in the, in the papers. There would be Guns N' Roses on the cover of it. Mm. You know, because that sells copies. Yeah. Well, I can understand when bands get pissed off. They're not all like that. Mm. And I can understand why you say you don't want to write anything that has got a meaning, because whatever meaning you put into it, so it gets twisted. It gets not only like, you know, it's not even, even a case of uh, like people saying, oh, well, uh, it can have the whatever meaning, you know, it's a double meaning thing and stuff like that. Because it's not even that. And all the meanings seem to be the wrong ones. Mm. Uh, you said that your, your family was that you were poor from your family mm. point of view. Yeah. Um, do you help your fin your family financially from you know what you earn out of yes. this? You help them out? Yeah. My well, dad's the only parent I've got left alive. I don't have any money every month. My sister is so it's, uh, it, it's self supports herself, she's an artist. I'm not that rich. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, Michael Jackson. I can't go and buy him a ranch or anything like that. I'm selling a few quid every month. Yeah. Mm. Are you an expensive band, or are you trying to, to always look at the financial side of everything? Like trying to shoot videos that are not too expensive. No, we're very expensive. We always think we're to blow life on We blow all our money on everything. This tour is costing. Yeah, we, 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 we don't make much money on tour. No, we lose it. We lose a thousand pounds a night every time we play. We lose a thousand pounds a night. We lose a fortune. There's not a lot of speculation accumulated. Yeah. yeah. But it's not that bad. We spent about two billion pounds on our latest video. Yeah. We won't, we won't recoup that back from that video, but you've got it. You've got to put it out to get in. Yeah, you've got to go for it. Yeah. Um, do you think things would have been a lot different from you if, if your family was well off? Yeah, I'm a bit back to start. Probably married to some architect or something like that. My architect. I don't know. That's what the kind of thing that rich families do, isn't it? They marry architects. They produce architects. Town planners. less white music um, and you've been listening to uh, you say Marvin Gaye or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. but then somewhere else you said you don't have a very soulful voice no, no. It's a problem. So there's I'm, a bit of, um, just a bag of, of contradictions <laughs> yeah there's a little bit of contradictions no I'm not <laughs> no I'm not yes I am no, um, how do you think you can you can deal with that? I can't, it's a problem. I never write so it's like on. just wishful thinking that you could... Uh, it's a try. I think you are successful in the... Um, not always. I mean, what I meant by that was that, you know, I don't like... The band I want to have, the band was 
sexuality to its music, not necessarily to its hip, not necessarily to its um, the way it comes across, but to its actual music. I think that's one of the things we're missing in our music. Mm -hmm. I think our music has been missing the groove. Not, I mean, I don't, I don't dance music, but I mean, it's missing something really animal to it. It's kind of almost like, it's almost like a white animal at the moment. It should be kind of brown. It's, kind of, it's a sort of polar animal. It should be something else. It should be an um, animal in the jungle or something. Uh -huh. I really like things like um, that Jesus and Mary chain, some side walking. Yeah. Which is brilliant, which is just sort of this really just a, a grinding and lots of full songs as well, like big new prints and stuff like that. It's just riffs, lots of stuff like that, with really tri you know, tribal rhythms. That's what we started off wanting to do when we first did stuff like the drowners, you know, it's like we're really supposed to be this really kind of tribal, almost pagan. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. yeah. sort of like Lord of the Flies or something like that. Yeah, Lord of the Flies. Do you know what I mean? Really yeah. African almost. And then, then the the stupid, the stupid media decided that we were a bunch of English fops and, and painted cartoons of us sipping Earl Grey tea and the people lost completely sight of that. But listen to our music, it's really sexual, it's really driving and, and quite and quite potent. It isn't, it isn't limbristic at all, especially our early music and the stuff on the new albums, well, stuff like this Hollywood Life and We Are the Pigs and stuff like that. It's very riff driven, very violent. That's how I did really interlink with French boy. But people choose not to see that side of it. They choose to see the, the fact that we've used a string, a 44 bit orchestra on the, on, the, on the thing, and therefore that we must be um, you know, Antonani or something like that. Well, I don't know. I got, I got the feeling that a lot of people seem to, from, 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 from the interviews that I've read, um, which I've got to say, I used to hate reading the interviews because they make me have the wrong opinion. Because if you read an interview, then you get the opinion of the person who wrote it. Yeah. You don't get your own. Yeah. So usually what I try as well, there's a whole thing about journalism in general. Yeah. Somebody comes and reviews a gig and he hates it. He loves it. You, know, you, get you, sh you, sh you end up shutting some doors. You don't walk in there with a completely open mind. Mm. Because you already have preconceived ideas of what the answer will be and what, you know, yeah. what you're going to say to me. Yeah. You're going to say to me, so it's, it's, it gets. But um, is the, the enthusiasm of a 17 year old fan of the band something very good? Enthusiasm? Yeah. About a 17 year old fan is very Seven, good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Do you get, do you get you know, speaking to people out there, you get the, what they think, they don't. Think of the music, which is the important thing. Yeah. And then come up to you and say, oh, I really like that song, but um, I didn't really like the flares you were wearing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. See what you mean? Yeah. They come up and say, I love your music. Full stop. Yeah. Surprise, surprise, British press always made up stories. Really? Uh, what stories made you laugh and what stories upset you? The stories made me laugh. Um, unfortunately, they don't usually tend to be that funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the one that made me laugh the most was it was just the report that we were um, that there were constant huge fist fights in the studio, and uh, and surprisingly that that was the one that made us all laugh the most because we're the least um, physical band you'll ever see. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, you, if you've seen the rest of them, I'm the fat guy out of the band. They are, uh, we're not, we're not On the skinny side. Um, and um, no one in our band fights, everyone, everyone sulks. Yeah. And so, uh, so that was, it was funny to me. <laughs> the idea of any of us having a fist fight is ridiculous. Everyone collapsed after about two minutes and had to have a fag. Um, yeah. the, the worst one? A, a lot of the drug ones are really frustrating because straight me, I heard loads of rumours that we were out of our faces when we were making the album, or out of our faces when we were doing the TV, and we're actually the straightest band you'll ever meet when we're recording, yeah. or uh, or right or um, recording or playing 
on TV or playing live. I mean, none of us have, have a beer the day of the show, yeah. let alone anything else. I do, I do resent the fact that people assume that the way we perform or the way we um, play is chemically enhanced. We don't need a thing to play live mm -hmm. or, to, yeah. or, to, or, to, or to make the records. Yeah. What we do afterwards is completely different now. You did a charity gig for AIDS on the 18th of July? Mm, well, sort of, yeah. It was, um, it was a benefit for Bass Drum and the work of Derek. Do you know Derek Jarman? British filmmaker. Derek? Derek Jarman. We had the last of England and Jubilee, Edward VIII. He's not very well known outside no, Britain because no, okay. he's. Cause Basically, I think I've heard the name, but I'm not exactly sure. I mean. he's, he's an incredibly talented guy. He's made a lot of uh, a lot of very low budget British films. Uh -huh. Some some brilliant British films. In fact. Yeah. Anyone who gets a chance to see some of his stuff, there's, there's a film called The Last of England, which is a beautiful film. Um, and he's he's dying of AIDS at the moment. And we'd worked with a couple of friends of his on the video. And they talked about doing something, and, and we said when we did it that we weren't going to do just a knee-jerk charity gig, because I think a lot of the time they're, they're virtually completely pointless. I know people have got their hearts in the right places, but we've done, we did one before for an enemy thing for shelter, which I just felt was pointless because the money went to shelter, which was obviously a good thing, and the charity had support completely. But Four bands played, and the money went to charity, and it didn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. It was just like we, we would, it would have been easier just to hand it out, out of our own pockets. So we wanted to do something that captured a bit of the spirit of, of Derek Jarman, some of the some of the uh, the beauty and the playfulness of him, um, and actually meant something. So what we did was um, we played a lot of a lot of songs we've never played before. We played a lot of the slower stuff. We had extra musicians on stage with some people, like a, a trumpeter and a, a cello player from a band called Sharp, who we were big fans of. And and they uh, had a huge screen behind us, and all the way through the gig they showed him. We had some of his films um, designed to fit the music, mm -hmm. which was incredible. It looked absolutely beautiful. And he was there and he gave a little speech and we had some, Chrissy Hine came on, wow. did Brass and Pocket with her, and Susie Sue came on, yeah. which was quite weird. And we did a whole load of stuff we haven't done before and tried to make it something completely different from a normal suede gig, something that people would actually be completely moved by and take home with them. Yeah, and not the usual swing yeah, concert. And would hope it yeah, uh, affect them. Sense. And it was great because a lot of people told us, because we've got quite a young audience, and a lot of people said to me beforehand, the crowd are going to hate it, you know what I mean? They're going to demand loads of upbeat songs, they're going to demand that you do the, you know, just like a greatest hits package. Yeah. And it was nothing to be further than the truth, so I've never had such a good reaction you, you, from Do you that. find that um, people want to, to sort of collaborate, contribute with you to music and stuff? Um, play with you or write together with you? No, not really. People, we, we haven't had a lot of that. We've never... We've never done that kind of thing. Um, we've never sort of hung out with celebrities or anything, so it hasn't really come. Across. When we approached when when we approached Chrissy and when we approached Susie, they both said yes immediately. But it's not something we've ever been really interested in. So we haven't had a lot of people phoning us up saying, "Do play on our record." We've been dead busy as well. Yeah. Um, it's not something that particularly appeals. Mm -hmm. um. Oh no, there's another thing to do with this. Why did you do this? Okay, you know, you say why. Do you think musicians have to do some something for the society or or you human being with their power? This is a bit of a no, no, it's quite general. No, it's a good question. Um, I think they should want to, but I don't. Th I really don't think the way to do it is. It's the accepted way nowadays of, of vast charity gigs all the time. I think they're quite self-defeating. I'm slightly terrified by the way music is becoming marginalised 
to being either a charity fundraiser, a theme from a film, or a cover version of something that just tugs on a few nostalgic heartstrings. Um, I think the, the only way music can make any kind of difference is if it, at the end of the day, if it moves people, mm -hmm. if, it, if, it, if it moves their hearts, if it moves their minds. Which you, you which said before, you always try. We, we, if, well, if we're not doing that, then... Yeah, then, you know, the, the way you try yeah. to sort of play a different song to yeah. start with, to, to sort of move people. There's, there, there's actually, there's no point if we're not doing yeah. that. Um, yeah, I do think it's, it's important to affect people with your music. But, but I, I am slightly worried about the way the music industry is turning into a... Music is becoming so secondary that, you know, there was a point in, in British Top Ten where everything was either a cover or from, from a film. Mm. And, and the best way of making any money nowadays is to do a cover version that's from a film. You're virtually guaranteed yeah, of a yeah. Top Ten. Kind of cool, yeah. um, Get the and I sometimes feel that about, about charity records and charity gigs, that they're actually make very little difference apart from turning music into this kind of huge entertainment thing. And I don't think music should be entertainment. I don't like people who think of themselves as entertainers. Well, they should be artists. Yeah. You know, it's an art form and it's an incredible Well, entertainment uh, has, has, is, should be by definition very sort of uh, light-hearted, light is the word? Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. You know, sort of meaningless you know, the meaningless pop. Yeah. And you were talking about, about ABC and Wham and all that. That doesn't last. That doesn't... Yeah, no. that, that's great Something for the moment. It has to be consumed quickly. And exactly, yeah. away. And that's what you do. You consume it and then you, then you shit it out. Yeah. And it doesn't stay with Next, you. Next, and then you need another one. Yeah. Again, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, like, it's like with dance music, because I think dance music is, is a, a totally fundamental revolution in what music's about. Well, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing at all. I think a lot of things in the dance music universe are, are completely laudatory. Mm -hmm. The way that it's completely democratic, records only make it if, if they actually move people. Mm -hmm. You can't hype the dance crowd, you have to... People either dance the records or they don't. But at the same time, there's, there's one thing I find with loads of those records, which is that they have a total effect on you while they're actually playing. When they're on, they actually, they actually take over your nervous system. But they die the minute they stop. They just don't live on with you at all. And I know with a lot of those records, it's deliberate, you know, and good for them. Yeah. But, but something for me that, that should make rock music special, or good rock record, is, is that it just lives on with you, it lives on in your head. Yeah. It's a way of saying things, and it mm -hmm. always just sits there with you. And there's records that, that I love that I probably haven't listened to for like two years or something. I don't need to because I know them all up here. Yeah. And that's actually the feeling that bring me. Uh -huh. And then, you yeah, know, the way the notes work. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of uh, um, situations where uh, the band record has got a whole of the lives to record the first half of And two months to record the next one. Two months to the next one. And all, especially if the first one has been tremendously successful. The second one, there's a lot of expectation. I think we don't have that problem. I think we've done our second album. Our first album was our difficult second album. Because the problems of the second al album normally are just of... Norm normally people come out with the first album, it catches everyone by surprise, so they're very open-minded to it. And then the expectations are huge for the second album. We've been through that. Yeah, exactly, that's what I mean. You don't have... To you know, but at the, the same time, for the first one has been so high. But at the same time, I do totally recognise one problem, which is just that we've had no time to to write, and just as importantly, we've had no time to actually live. You know, the songs have got to be about something. About living. Yeah, and yeah. and a lot of the time, touring isn't living. Yeah. In the slides. Yeah. And we've no desire to write songs about the lack of good vegetarian food and British Airways, which has been a Major words. Lufthansa is not bad. Air India. Air India. Yeah, cool. I'm sure Air India is cool. But um, yeah, it is a problem. But the point is, if we if we start to record this album and find that we've got nothing to write about, then we just won't record it. We'll take some time off and go back to. Is that is that why right. you are now doing this this 
we've taken a little bit of time off to do this EP. Sure. We're going to do it and see and see what, see whether it's any good. And if it's yeah. not, then tough luck. We'll have to wait a bit. We'll yeah. Spend a bit more time at home. Yeah. And live. Hmm. We all learn to live on the road, which is a very strange thing, which I'm only just realising I'm going to have to do. I always treated being on the road as this kind of almost like a holiday when nothing counted. Mm -hmm. And it's only recently come home to me that that I spent as much time in Tokyo in the past four months as, you know, as I have in London. Yeah. And if I'm gonna, actually going to have any kind of life, I've got to start thinking about it in that terms, which is a very strange experience. Yeah. It's very weird. Spend more time in London than in Tokyo. Or just, or just learn, learn to live when you're in Tokyo and not just sit in the hotel room. It's yeah. just something we actually started working on. It's nice having friends over the world now because the first time you go away, you're just so lost. You don't know what you're doing. And now people who I count as my friends are, are dotted everywhere. Uh -huh. So it'd be nice. I mean, going back to America will be a lot easier for me anyway. Yeah, because, because, because you know I know people, people there. there. I know I'm going to turn up in Toronto and Chicago and San Francisco and there's going to be people I know and I like waiting for, which will make it hell.